All right, so Roberta, what you did then was to write them as stories first? Yeah, um, basically what, I, what intrigued me was the fact that since I am a storyteller and I've always been a storyteller, was the fact that this was another dimension beyond uh, just a book or a movie, the fact that you could interact with a story and somehow um, control or at least get the feeling that you are controlling the story. That's what intrigued me. It was just another dimension added to a plot. And, uh, and so that's why I do it, and that's where I get my enjoyment out of it. And, and currently, you can't do that without a computer. You can't do it with film, and you can't do it with paper. You have to have a computer. Did you do sketches and of what you want the screen to look like? Yeah, well, first I write myself a story, and then I figure out how many screens or rooms there are in this particular game, and that means many, how many places you can be. And then uh, once I've determined all that, and I call that a map of an adventure game, it's also, it's, it's a lot like storyboarding. Um, once I've done that, then I draw rough sketches of what I feel the picture should look like. In the early days, such as this, I drew that. <laughs> I'm not an artist, but at the time, it was just basically me and Ken, and we couldn't afford an artist. Um, now, of course, we use, we have whole teams of people, uh, professional artists and musicians and everything else, that, programmers. That was your second uh, adventure game? Second adventure game. The Wizard and the Princess. Yeah, this one, Mystery House was the first graphics adventure game with no color. This was the first graphics adventure game with color.